Hello and welcome to another video. Today we will see important topic in control system. It is uh, difficult for the system modeling in the differential equation form as the number of differential equations, number of derivatives increases. So we transform that system into another domain, the frequency domain. So Laplace transform helps us to transform from the time domain to the frequency domain. So the uh, transformation, so here we have the time domain and on the right we have the frequency domain. So we are transforming the system from the time domain to the frequency domain by using this transformation, Laplace transformation. So the function that helps us to transform is, so this is the Laplace transform and this is the function in the time domain and this is the resultant function in the frequency domain. So the function in the time domain is substituted here and this transformation helps us to get the corresponding frequency domain function where s is where s is a complex variable s equal to sigma plus j omega now we will see few basic laplace transforms the laplace transform of an impulse in the time domain would be one the laplace transform of the step function would be one by s similarly we have the laplace transform of e raised to minus at f of t Laplace transform of e raised to minus a t f of t would be f of s plus a. So wherever s is there, we will replace that with s plus a. So this is called the frequency shifting. And Laplace of f of t minus t is equal to e raised to minus s t f of s. So this is getting multiplied with the uh, Laplace of f of t. So this is called time shifting. So this is time shifting. And the Laplace of f of a t, this is scaling. So the corresponding Laplace transform would be one by a f of s by a. And the Laplace of derivative of that function would be s into f of s minus f of zero. So this is differentiation theorem. And Laplace of second derivative would be S square F of S minus S into F of zero minus F dash of zero. Now we have two important theorem which will be very much useful in control systems. That is final value theorem and initial value theorem. So the final value theorem will help us identify the value of the function at infinity at the final value that can be found by uh, limit s tends to zero s into f of s where f of s is the laplace transform of f of t and the initial value theorem will help us find the initial value of that function that is limit of s tends to infinity s into f of s so these two theorems will be helpful in control system now we will see the Laplace transform of a into e raised to minus a t u of t from the previous basic laws. So this first equation gives the Laplace basic uh, definition of Laplace transform. So if the function in f of t can be converted to the frequency domain function f of s by using this transformation. So uh, here our function f of t is nothing but a e raised to minus a t. So a e raised to this u of t is a step function. So by multiplying this entire this function with u of t, we are informing the informing that the information that we get is that our function varies from zero to infinity by multiplying it by u of t we are mentioning that the function is uh, from zero to infinity so the actual function that we have here is a e raised to minus a t so a e raised to minus a t is the function 
and e raised to minus st dt is there in the definition of the laplace transform so here a is a constant we can take it outside and this both can be combined together as e raised to minus s plus a into t dt and after applying the uh, integral we will get minus a by s plus a e raised to minus s plus a t varying from t equal to zero to infinity so after substituting we get it as a by s plus a so that is the laplace transform of a that is a laplace transform of a e raised to minus a t u of t many times we will have to find the inverse laplace transform that is converting from the frequency domain back to uh, time domain so uh, the concept is like this we have the concept is like this we have uh, the time domain equations of the system we convert that using the laplace transform to the frequency domain and do all our analysis in the frequency domain which will be easier so after doing all the calculations all the analysis in the frequency domain we will transfer it back to the time domain using the inverse laplace transform so finding an inverse laplace transform is an important step in control systems you will see how to find the inverse laplace transform of few functions the first function that we will see is 2 by s plus 1 into s plus 2. Here, here as you can see, we have a multiplication of s1 plus s plus 1 and s plus 2. So we will split that. We will split that as k1 by s plus 1 plus k2 by s plus 2. Now we will use this uh, partial fraction expansion to separate these two uh, factors so we need to find the lap inverse of 2 by s plus 1 to s plus 2 we will first split it into these two terms and by partial fraction expansion we will try to find the values of k1 and k2 now uh, to find the value of k1 uh, we multiply this actual function 2 by s plus 1 into s plus 2 with s plus 1 and letting the value of s equal to minus 1 so when you multiply it with s plus 1 this s plus 1 and s plus 1 will get cancelled and 2 by s plus 2 at s equal to minus 1 will give you the value 2 so the value of k1 is 2 similarly to find the value of k2 we will multiply 2 by s plus 1 into s plus 2 with s plus 2 and letting the value of s as minus 2 which will result in the value minus 2 so k2 is minus 2 now after partial fraction expansion we get 2 by s 2 by s plus 1 into s plus 2 equal to 2 by s plus 1 minus 2 by s plus 2 so that will be so after partial fraction expansion of uh, 2 by s plus 1 into s plus 2 we get 2 by s plus 1 minus 2 by s plus 2 so the inverse of s plus 1 is e raised to minus t and the inverse of s plus 2 is e raised to minus 2 t so this is the inverse laplace of the function 2 by s plus 1 into s plus 2 and the next function that we would like to find the inverse is 32 by s into s plus 4 into s plus 8 here again the similar procedure is uh, taken but here we have so we will split that as k1 by s plus k2 by s plus 4 plus k3 by s plus 8 to find the value of k1 k2 and k3 uh, to find the value of k1 we will multiply the actual function 32 by s into s plus 2 into s plus 4 with s and letting the value of s equal to 0 so s will get cancelled and 
32 it uh, when you let s equal to 0 it would become 32 divided by to find the value of k1 we will uh, multiply the actual function 32 divided by s into s plus 4 into s plus 8 into s and letting the value of s as 0 so at the value of s equal to 0 what is the uh, value of that function so 32 divided by s and s gets cancelled by letting the value of s equal to 0 we will get 32 divided by 4 into 8 so the value of k1 is 1 to find the value of k2 we will multiply the function 32 divided by s into s plus 4 into s plus 8 with s plus 4 so s plus 4 and s plus 4 gets cancelled and letting the value of s as minus 4 so it will be 32 divided by minus 4 into 4 you get the value as minus 2 and to find the value of k3 we will multiply the function 32 divided by s into s plus 4 into s plus 8 with s plus 8 so s plus 8 and s plus 8 gets cancelled and letting the value of s equal to minus 8 so 32 divided by minus 8 into minus 4 that will give you the value plus 1 so after finding the value of k1 k2 k3 we will get it as 1 by s minus 2 by s plus 4 plus 1 by s plus 8 uh, and the laplace inverse of 1 by s is 1 plus inverse of 2 by s plus 4 is 2 e raised to minus 4 t and laplace inverse of 1 by s plus 8 is 1 e raised to minus 8 t so this is the inverse laplace of 32 divided by s into s plus 4 into s plus 8. There are few other functions that uh, requires a different way of finding the Laplace inverse. We'll discuss that in the next video. Thank you.